Hi folks, Damon here. So today I want to talk to you about the new EMR console. We've been hard at work over the past several months making this easier to use and faster for you to get around the console. So I want to take a quick look through this today and show you how it works. Let's get started. So one of the most common things that folks want to do is create a cluster. So let's go ahead and check that out. In the create cluster flow, you can see this is definitely a little bit different than you're used to. A couple things to call out here. One, we consolidated everything on one page. So if you're creating a cluster and you want to search around for something, you can go ahead and do that. And we have this new summary uh, box over here that shows you all the options that you've selected for your cluster. This is kind of similar to the EC2 console, if you're familiar with that, when you go ahead and create an instance. So this might look a little similar to you. The other thing we try to do is try to make it as easy as possible to get started. So if you just want to start the latest Spark cluster from here, just go ahead, choose your IAM roles, and then click Create Cluster. And that's really all it is. Uh, the other thing to note, uh, these are the default service roles that are on the path to deprecation. These are already in my account. If you want to, you can create your own roles uh, that are scoped down, and you can also create roles from the console here that are scoped down to the specific resources that you need. So it's recommended to, to either use one of the uh, pre-created roles from the console here or use your own service roles. But now I can go ahead and click Create Cluster if I wanted to. But first, let's run through some of the different options here. One of the things I want to call out is this new application bundle section. What we've done for the most uh, common frameworks that folks run on EMR, like Spark and Flink and Trino, uh, we've created these application bundles that have everything pre-selected you needed to run that uh, application on EMR. You can, of course, go in here and customize things if you want to, but uh, one other benefit of these application bundles is they can decrease the cluster startup time. So it's one really nice benefit, of course, to having these kind of pre-packaged for you. Down below, you can go ahead and do the rest of your cluster configuration as well. So you can choose instance groups or instance fleets. Uh, you can choose your scaling options if you want to scale it manually or use EMR managed scaling and so on and so on. One other thing that we've done here is, you d is if you do have a question about something, just go ahead, click that info button. And we put a little bit of high level content over here on the right hand side and then links to learn more about these different options. But right now, I'm just going to go ahead and create my cluster. So with that, I'm dropped onto the new uh, cluster summary page. A uh, little bit different, of course, than we've seen before, but we've tried to surface some of the most common information that you might want to know about the cluster. So what EMR version you're running, the installed applications that you've got, where logs are, and things like that. Down below, we've got a bunch of different tabs if you want to dive into different sections of the cluster. So on the properties tab, you can see network and security info and other information about the cluster. If you have bootstrap actions, those would be here. You could see what the status of those was. If you want to see what instances your cluster is running and the settings related to that, that's on the instances tab. And you can see here, we're still provisioning EC2 instances. So we'll come back to see what that looks like in a little bit. The other thing I want to call out is this new uh, steps page. So we can go ahead and add a step here. This is similar to the workflow for creating a cluster, just trying to make it easier for you and give you some info buttons up there. The step settings change here depending on what type of cluster is. This is a Spark cluster, so you can see we've got a Spark application there where you could do a Spark submit, but we're just going to do a custom jar uh, for a simple S3 command. So uh, EMR has a jar built into clusters called commandrunner.jar. We're actually going to use uh, customrunner.jar just to see what happens uh, when we get an error message. So I'll just do a simple AWS S3 LS with that, and then go ahead and hit add step. One thing I want to call out here is that we've got this new expandable row. So if I click that, I can see information about this step, uh, some of the details about it. And if I had other steps here, I could go ahead and expand those other steps as well. So pretty nice to be able to dive into there and see kind of what's going on. On this applications tab, once the cluster is ready, you'll have links here to view some of your on cluster uh, application UIs. And even once the cluster shuts down, we'll have other links here for the persistent application UIs. So um, really nice to have those right there. Let's go back to the instances page really quickly. And you can see here, I've got um, an instance provisioning right there. And if I, and now it's bootstrapping and you can see here, I've got the expandable row again. So if I expand that, I can see it's an M5 XL, some details about the instance and also the instance ID and you know, public DNS name and IP address and all that kind of information you might need to be able to connect back into the instance. So all that information there, again, in these nice little expandable rows for you. 
One other thing to call out too, you may have noticed uh, this little notifications bar up here. So if you are creating a bunch of steps or creating a bunch of clusters in the past, you've noticed that uh, sometimes your browser window gets a little overwhelmed with notifications. So now you've got this little collapsible bar here that you can kind of uh, see at a glance what notifications you have, what different types of notifications you have, and collapse that if it's, uh, if it's a little bit too busy for you. So let me go ahead and close out of those. Back on the cluster list page, you can see there's my new cluster. And again, we've got these expandable rows here. So when I expand that, uh, I can see information about my cluster that's important to me. And I can see at a glance kind of what's going on with that cluster. So I can see uh, my steps. I can see the different state of different steps that are running on that cluster, what my applications are, my instances, and quick links to different sections uh, that I mentioned uh, earlier when we were looking at the cluster summary page. Uh, this, these are some nice deep links here as well. So if I click on this pending step, that'll take me to the step tab and have it already be filtered by pending steps. So if I want to click through and kind of see that different information, uh, really easy to get to from the cluster summary page. While we're here, uh, one other thing to call out is the search bar here. So there's a couple different type of filters. There's this API filter, where if I select a specific uh, step ID, that is going to go back to the EMR API and fetch information about that and bring it back into the console. But if I'm using this client filter here, this filters information that's just in the console already. So if I've loaded the page and I use that client filter, it's not going to go back to the API um, and filter it by step name, for example. It's just going to filter what's showing here. While we're talking about monitoring and looking at the cluster, there's also this nice monitoring tab. We can see our cluster status and node status and input and output. This just helps us uh, keep an eye on the cluster, keep an eye on you know, different uh, categories of metrics that are in the cluster. We also have this events tab where you can see for this specific cluster, different events that are happening to the cluster, like uh, here's it being started, here's us adding a step to it. So we can see that information and can, of course, you know, filter by different events there as well. Let's go back to the cluster list page real quick. Here, there's also that nice little search bar. And again, we've got API filters for client ID and then client filters for cluster name and status details as well. A couple other things here. On the left-hand side, we've got our events page. And this has events for all of the clusters that you have in your account. So you can go ahead and look at all that. And if you want to, for example, you can filter by, you know, if you want to see if there's any error events happening across your clusters, you can go ahead and do that as well. In the block public access section, by default, when an EMR cluster is created in a public security group, uh, we block public access except for port 22, SSH. You can, of course, go in here and change this setting if you want to, but we would recommend uh, leaving it as is so you have a secure by default EMR cluster. And even better if you run your EMR clusters in private subnets, uh, that'll help prevent public access as well. On the security configurations page, we've made this a little bit easier as well to create a security configuration. So if you go down here and click create security configuration, you can just go ahead and choose the default settings. And that enables uh, at rest encryption for data in S3 and on your local disk with a KMS key. And it also can enable in transit encryption and that's with a PEM certificate. So um, if you're doing a dev cluster, usually that's just a set of self-signed certificates. If a production cluster, uh, you know, uh, officially signed certificates. And then we only allow the instance metadata service V2 on the cluster. So you can go ahead, create a default configuration like that. But again, if you want, you can configure, you know, specific different encryption settings if you want to for your cluster. And that's pretty easy to do here. So let's go back to our cluster really quickly. Looks like that cluster is already up and running, so that's awesome. And again, if I click through here, uh, I've got my quick links to my steps, and it looks like one failed. So when I click on that failed step, I can go in there. There's no logs yet, but when they do, I'll be able to see them there. And if I go back to that properties page, one of the other cool things is we've got a log browser uh, built into the console as well. So if I click the log destination, that pops up this little browser, and I can look at the different logs uh, for both my nodes and my steps. So if I go into that step that failed before, I can pop that open and look at the controller error for my step. And looks like I used uh, the wrong jar or something like that for my step. I can also, of course, see these logs back on the steps page too. So now those log files are there. When I click that, again, that just pops right up there. And as those different log files populate, those will show up on the console too.
So that is a quick overview of the new features in the EMR console. One other thing, as you're going through the console, as you're using it, uh, we've got a link up here to provide feedback. You can even email our product team directly. And if you don't see this little bar up here, there's a feedback link down on the bottom left here. Feel free to uh, give us feedback. Let us know what works, what doesn't. Um, you know, we have folks uh, that are, you know, reading that feedback every single time it comes in and working to help make things better. Or if there's an issue, you know, fix that as soon as we can. So please take a look at that. And before I go, one last thing that I wanted to call out on the new console, dark mode. All right. Thank you, everybody. Hope you have a great one. Take care.